All right, welcome everybody. My name is Jacob Quinn. I'm gonna be talking about how we're using Julia at Domo um, and what we've learned uh, in deploying Julia in a production environment um, this year, scaling it up to process um, petabytes of data. So what is Domo? We are uh, branded as the operating system for your business. Um, you know, it's, it's great marketing speak around, uh, you know, just managing your business and through your data. So you can aggregate all of your data for your company in different sources, marketing, you know, sales, uh, different things, bring it into one place, transform it, clean it, join it, do anything you need to do, and then build powerful dashboards that live update and, and auto update and, and things like that. So um, helps you run your business, um, helps you, you know, define your metrics, and um, you know, it's accessible from any device, so um, great for business people everywhere. Um, we do a lot of data at Domo. So last month, we processed nine trillion rows uh, of data um, from all over the world, um, and that number has doubled since the beginning of the year when we did four and a half trillion rows in January. So we do a lot of data. We see a lot come through uh, our pipeline. So we wanted, our, our, our issue, our problem, our, our motivation for getting into Julia was we wanted to do analytics at scale on this data coming through Domo. Um, we have uh, you know, mainly a, a Java backend, all of our services running. Um, we do a little bit in C, C++, a little bit in Go, but we wanted to do analytics at scale and uh, it was a little daunting uh, imagining doing the kind of analytics we wanted to do in any other language. So Julia was a, an attractive uh, thing because it, uh, it allows you to iterate quickly. Um, it has the performance and scale that we wanted and the math and statistics are, are right there. They're, they're a core part of the language um, in a lot of ways. They're ex easily accessible. There's a lot of development around that. So um, those are some of the main reasons we wanted to go with Julia. So uh, I wanna go over briefly um, the application design that, we've, that we're using um, to run our, our analytics service on our data pipeline. So we have a um, core integration package. It's kind of our, our uh, you know, foundational package that provides integration with the rest of Domo services. So it handles config, it handles authentication, it handles um, you know, the specific logging format that we integrate with. Um, it runs an HTTP server. Um, so that's kind of this uh, you know, foundation of the application um, that the application builds on that can use everything. And then we have this kind of model and, and utils layer. Um, the model defines all of the types, the objects um, that the application uses and any utilities that are you know, useful for the application. And then in terms of the business logic, uh, the application logic, there's two entry points. One is the resource, that's um, the endpoints, so an, an HTTP REST API, um, you know, endpoints you can hit from a web browser and they will make requests. So that's one entry point into the application. The other is through this events package. So um, we use a, a service called RabbitMQ for um, publishing events on a bus um, and then uh, we have a Julia, you know, while loop basically that's listening for those events and then can respond to those. So two entry points to the resource and the events that call down to the service layer. This is where all the key logic lives that does the analytics uh, based on whatever inputs are coming in, whatever request is made or event that comes in. Um, and then on the lower level, we have the mapper, which um, calls down to the database for any persisted objects and um, we'll interface that way. So this has worked out really well for us. Um, these, are, I have kind of tried to visually show that these are sh the model and this, you know, the core library are shared amongst all of these. They all represent different modules. And then these are imported into them and they all can live nice and separate and be composable um, and then have access to the things that they need uh, when they need them. So this has worked out really well in terms of how we've organized kind of our application that gets deployed. Um, and then how we actually deploy the code um, out to the production environment is uh, we use Docker. We, we created a base image um, 
that includes the Julia binary. Um, so we can actually run Julia. And then we include a manifest file of the external dependencies um, needed for the applications. Now, the reason that we have a manifest here instead of at the application layer is um, it can be really beneficial to kind of state at a domo level the external packages that we depend on and the exact versions and know that, okay, if we need to up update an external dependency, uh, we can do it in one place and it will, uh, you know, filter down to all, you know, downstream applications that are in use at, at domo. So it's kind of a centrally managed uh, for external dependencies in one layer and then, um, each application image can then start from the base Julia image and just say include that, copy in any application code and it's ready to run. So the application layer doesn't necessarily have to do anything with external dependencies, it just deals with its own application code and the um, external dependencies are all managed one layer up. Um, in terms of uh, the types of uh, deployments that we do, we actually currently support two different uh, deployments. One is in a Kubernetes environment where we just deploy the Docker image directly um, into the, you know, setting up a Kubernetes service and deployment and, and having it roll up, spin up a pod. Um, we actually run uh, separate containers for the different entry points into the application. So uh, we have this resource and events. So these would each be different containers running in a single Kubernetes pod. Um, the reason for that is we actually initially ran them in the same container, um, but due to the Kubernetes setup, it's actually, it's kind of hard to track um, individual kind of usage between the entry points. Um, and we had weird cases where, I mean, we're, we're obviously putting like resource limits and whatnot on the, app, on the on the containers, but it's, it can be hard to, de, you know, separate those out um, from with, if they're both running in the same container. And so in a Kubernetes world, it actually makes a lot of sense for us to split that out. Um, you can very easily see metrics and, uh, you know, resource usage by container, um, and that can simplify a lot of things. And then in this mode, um, we're obviously not using Julia's built-in worker management, so add procs and spawn and the distributed standard uh, lib. So we actually created a, a, a quick little package that allows you to share data over a shared memory, so MMAP files, and then um, just uh, shared system files. So it allows you to quickly serialize and deserialize things to kind of do worker communication, and, and it works really well. The other one is we will deploy directly on cloud instances. So in that way, we actually still use our Docker image that gets built fully, and then we actually just copy out the necessary Julia binary and files from the Docker image and deploy it on the box and it runs really well. In that case, uh, we actually just run the uh, resource and entry all from the same application process, the main worker, and use Julia's built-in worker management. So spawning up additional worker processes and doing things like that way. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, we'd like to open source some of the stuff we've been working on. I mentioned we do uh, we have some code around config handling, context setting and handling, um, kind of this process data sharing that's outside of Julia's kind of standard thing. Um, these are not specific to Domo and they can be useful, you know, for uh, lots of people in lots of different contexts. So we'd like to kind of package those up when we can and, and share those. Um, but this is just a quick example. I know this talk was more focused on like how we're using Julia, how we're deploying it. Um, but this is an example of some of the things we're able to generate. So of all the data that comes through, we can do some anomaly detection and, and find outliers and surface that up to um, users. And then also do like automatic correlation detection between, you know, different columns in your data set and say, oh, hey, we found, you know, some interesting patterns and stuff like that. But um, thank you and happy to take any questions. Um, so we haven't done much on the job side of Kubernetes. We really just kind of define the deployment and it spins up the long running pods. So, um, I mean, eventually we might get into there if, if we have kind of persisted things that we need to run migrations on and stuff. Um, and that, 
I mean, we, I think we would just hook into the regular kind of Kubernetes setup that way, but uh, we haven't had to really deal with that much, you know, from where we are now. Yeah, Curtis? Uh, in terms of Julia itself, or yeah, like packages, or? So that is, that is one of the parts about the approach that we're taking where um, we're saying that the external dependencies will be explicitly managed at this base image layer. Um, that requires the applications to use specific versions, and so if they need to bump a, a dependency or something, they have to work with upstream to kind of say, hey, is everybody okay with, with bumping this you know, version up? And then the, ver the application layers would need to manage that. But um, so far, I think it's been worth the, that extra step that you have to go through just to ensure that all the, app ev all the applications are running on the same set of um, external package versions and it's very easy to rev those if we need. The package three would probably also have some kind of presence in there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because it does, I mean, we could explicitly say these are different environments and then um, be able to, you know, add different versions as needed down here. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, uh, how would you convert Julia with the image you have right now in the back end? Uh-huh. So we run kind of a microservice architecture. So pretty much all the services just talk over REST APIs. So um, you know, as long as we have an HTTP server with defined endpoints, um, they can talk to us. And then we have, you know, we use HTTP to do requests to other services. Um, that's part of the kind of core package here is we have like a Java service client essentially that. Uh, we actually are, are a little bit fancy where we can take a Java interface that defines its REST API and automatically generate a Julia client. So it makes it really easy because then you can just say, hey, there's the service, here's its REST API, generate a Julia client, and I can just use it right away. Nine trillion rows last month, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, we don't do any, we don't do any Hadoop, okay. uh, HDFS or anything like that, yep. Any other questions? Yeah, we're finding any final questions? Okay, let's, let's just thank you. Thank you.